Welcome back to News Vision. I'm Tyler Brown. The run-up to the midterm elections involved one of the most expensive and heated campaigns ever. The Tea Party conservatives held their rally on the Mall in August, and the Liberals came to town twice, first with the One Nation rally at the end of September, and then just days before the election. But they still couldn't stop what President Obama called a serious shellacking of the Democrats. We have two stories. First, News Vision reporter Alex Halt with the One Nation rally, and then Kyla Grant with the John Stewart Rally for Sanity. Women's rights are under attack. What do we do? Stand up like right that. Signs, posters, chants, and shouts were all in front of the Lincoln Memorial as hundreds of thousands of frustrated Americans flooded Washington, D.C. for the One Nation Rally, a demonstration dedicated to building a more united America with jobs, justice, and education for all. I'm just fed up with in the direction that this country is going. We need to celebrate our diversity, even in the federal government. We're supposed to be the model employer, but we don't do a good job. People from all walks of life have come today to the National Mall to achieve one goal, to bring the nation back together. And as a gay man who feels like a second-class citizen in America, we're here in solidarity with people who have fought for their civil rights and their human rights before us. One Nation Working Together is a nationwide liberal organization dedicated to bringing individuals and organizations together for change. World peace. With me, people. According to the Associated Press, the crowd on the mall was an estimated 175,000. It was the first major rally for liberal and progressive groups in Washington, D.C. after the conservative rally back in August of this year. They are hoping to offer a different point of view to the Tea Partiers. I hope it's a slap in the face to Beck and Palin. And the liberals and conservatives will face off for one more rally on the Mall on October 30th, where TV personalities John Stewart and Steve Colbert are the host. I'm Alex Hope for News Vision. <laughs> Days before an important midterm election, the atmosphere on the mall was lighthearted. Daily Show host John Stewart announced his rally to restore sanity last month. The National Mall was packed with thousands of people from all over the nation. We came down just for the rally. Laughter overpowered political talk, and most people were pretty civil as John Stewart and Stephen Colbert performed a variety of political stunts and jokes. I hope it just instills to people that. You know, they can get involved with politics without getting too serious. Signs in the crowd range from serious to silly, but the overall message was, can't we all just get along? Stop being idiots and start getting along and start pulling together for the country. Although it was not called a political rally, people were most excited to see Stewart's political satire in person. There are a lot of serious issues that they bring light to, but they're comedians in the end. But for some, Stewart doesn't just bring laughter. He comforts. I mean, when George Bush was reelected, I was miserable, and I had that was the only thing that made me laugh that night. Midterm elections don't usually garner a lot of attention by voters or the news media, but this year is different. To me, it's not an off-term election. It's very much of an on-term election. The resounding message of today has been to restore sanity, but it's also to remind everyone to get out and vote. Yeah, I'm voting on Tuesday, first time, so I'm a little bit nervous. But for some, that message was lost. We came here and I forgot to do an absentee ballot. I'm Kyla Grant for News Vision. Politics wasn't the only thing happening on the mall this fall. Thousands turned out to either walk or run to help raise awareness and money for AIDS. News Vision reporter Rodney Hawkins has more on the 24th annual Whitman Walker AIDS Walk. It's good to see so many people coming out and in the support. Laura Stevens and 7,000 others laced up to walk and run 3.1 miles for AIDS. It's a good day and it's not raining. As you notice, it's pouring all week and we get the best day. And a great day it was, according to Whitman Walker Clinic. They raised over $850,000 for the 15,000 people living with AIDS in D.C. According to the director of the AIDS Walk, David Mallory, there were three main goals for the walk. The main uh, goals of the, of the walk is, is the fundraising, but also uh, bringing community together and educating the community. As you can see behind me, many are walking for this year's AIDS Walk, but some have specific stories for why they're walking, like Courtney's. 
Courtney was my best friend. Rhonda Brady lost her friend almost two years ago. She was HIV positive and she came down with, um, it's a kind of a rare disease. It's called PML. I wanted to get her story out, you know, so that other people aren't. Um, she was misdiagnosed because they, it has a lot of the same symptoms as a stroke. So she could have got treatment earlier. Brady said that her inspiration throughout the run was the memory that she wore on her t-shirt. Brady says she plans to participate in the walk as long as she has her health. And as for Laura Stevens, Next year. Enjoy it? Uh, yeah, it was wonderful. I think next year I'm going to try to sign up to run. I'm Rodney Hawkins for News Vision. Watching all that exercise might make you hungry. Well, whether you like your hot dog extra hot, your lobster on a roll, or your cupcake served curbside, there's probably a food truck vendor to meet your culinary tastes. And News Vision reporter Kyla Grant says they're competing for your taste buds. Our walkie dog comes with french fries, gravy, and cheese on top of it. Oh, okay. Do you want that still? No. Okay. You, want, you want a regular hot dog and regular french fries? Right. Okay. DC's first annual two-day curbside cook-off showcased the city's top 20 food trucks and attracted more than 8,000 customers. The main lobster roll truck was one of the most popular. The lobster man had people lining up before he even arrived. We're waiting for the lobster guy. The lines were pretty long, so we've been waiting a while. The food trucks have been taking a bite out of the customer base of downtown restaurants parking right outside their doors and snatching their lunchtime customers who are eager for change. It's pretty monotonous to go to the same four or five restaurants that are in the walking distance, so it's nice to have a little more um, variety. Business is booming for the food truck vendors, but the local restaurants are not thrilled about their success. Although the trucks are licensed to vend on the streets, Farragut Square subway owner Frank El Mahaviv says they are not playing fair. What's what's the problem with the money? I don't know how much it is, but it, it's it's nothing compared compared to what we are paying. The people really want the food trucks, so we should give the people what they want, not the businesses. The DC Restaurant Association says it's working to revise regulations to suit both the brick and mortar businesses and the food trucks. Customers say they don't want to get in the middle of this food fight. They just want to keep their unique treats on the streets. I'm Kyla Grant for News Vision. Well, that's our report for now. We hope you've enjoyed our stories. For all of us here at News Vision, I'm Danielle Hopkins. Be sure to join us next time for News Vision and news you can use.